Good morning, everybody. How are we doing? Good. It's good to see you. Lots of people here again today. Welcome everybody online. Uh, if you're brand new, we want to welcome you. Thanks for coming. Reservers, give it up for anybody that might be new here today. Would love, uh, love to meet you. Uh, you might hear my voice being a little bit raspy or me having to clear my throat. I've uh, been battling what many people are, some of the stuff going around. And so uh, be patient with me and I'll try to speak slowly and clearly. Good? <laughs> All right, all right. This, these guys like that. Good over here. Okay, good. Hey, uh, if we've been in this. We started this series last week called Clear View, where we are and where we believe God is taking us. As I came out, you probably saw we have three stools uh, out here. In just a few minutes, I'm going to have a couple people on staff join me, and we're going to talk to you about our church uh, and keep unpacking some things that we believe God is doing, and you're going to be really blessed today. Now, before we get there, um, I want to kind of frame today around uh, what I believe God is continuing to work and develop in your life and my life and us as a community. If you have your Bibles, and by the way, bring your Bibles, go to Genesis. I think you can find that book. Go to Genesis. It's the first one. Uh, go to Genesis chapter 32. Uh, a lot of you use phones and tablets. That's great. That's awesome. We're going to have it up here on the screen for you as well. If you're new to church, we want to make sure we help you engage with us. Uh, but if you're a community member here at Western Reserve, Grab a Bible, mark it up, make notes. I'm saying it every week because you need to give this Bible to a family member someday, to a child someday, and let them see how God uh, worked in you as you les listened and read the Word of God. So make sure you have a Bible. Genesis chapter 32. Uh, last week what I did uh, was I opened up the whole uh, series talking about what I call movement moments. And what a movement moment is, is it's a time in your life. It's a specific moment in your life where because of the events that happened in that moment, it changed the trajectory of your life. And we have movement moments, all of us, and you could go back to some, and I gave you kind of a, a laundry list of movement moments in my life where God changed, literally, the trajectory of my life because something happened in a moment, both positive and negative, and we all have them, movement moments. And we're praying as a church, we are praying that we would have in the next weeks, last week, this week, next week, and then the next year to come, that we will have movement moments that we'll be able to point back to different times in our lives where we said, man, I remember when God did that. Boy, I cannot believe that God used me to do that. I cannot believe I stepped out and did what God asked me to do. And now uh, it has changed the trajectory of my life. Movement moments. Well, as we look today, that was the definition of it. Today, I want to talk with you about maybe just a, a, a simple application on how movement moments begin to happen. And I would tell you today that I believe that movement moments are often, are, are not all the time, but often activated by a spirit of determination. Let me say it again. Movement moments are often activated by a spirit of determination. Jacob is a great example of that. Jacob in the Bible, that's what we're gonna see in Genesis 32. Let me tell you about Jacob. Um, I only have a few minutes here today, and so um, I, I'm gonna give you the highlights of his life so we're not just looking at this passage and, and like out of nowhere. Let me tell you about Jacob. Jacob uh, came from somewhat of a complicated uh, family, and, and kind of like we come from complicated families. Uh, Jacob had a brother, his name was Esau, and, and they had this thing going on, kind of this competition. Jacob was, was a mama's boy, honestly. He liked to stay home, the Bible says, and hang around the tents and camp and so forth. And Esau was a hunter. He was with his dad. And uh, we know that uh, his mom, uh, Jacob's mom, favored him, and Esau's dad favored Esau. So you can imagine what's going on there, you know, in family strife. Uh, we also know that there was a birthright stolen in the Old Testament, that Jacob stole a birthright. And, and so there's this more stuff, there's more stuff going on there between these two brothers. So much so at one point that, uh, that Jacob had to move to his uncle's territory and, um, and Laban and live there for several years. And somewhere in the midst of all of that 
time, and you can go back and read the whole story, uh, we know that, that Esau was going to be coming and visiting Jacob. And Jacob did not know what the visit was going to be. Was it going to be, I'm going to come and, and say to you, curtains, bud, or are we going to reunite as brothers or whatever? And Jacob, I believe, was afraid. And, and Jacob took his family, his entire um, entourage, if you will, they left Laban, and where we pick up the story here is they're on their journey, they cross a river, and he sends people, his, his family across the river, he stays back, and he has this encounter with God. And let me tell you something, whenever we are at a breaking point in our lives, whenever we are concerned or we are burdened and there's something going on, and a movement moment is about to happen, Oftentimes, oftentimes, we have moments like this with God. And I do not believe Jacob was any different. So uh, Genesis chapter 32, verses uh, 22 through verse 32 is what we are going to look at. And I think it's up here. Let me just read it. It says, that night, Jacob got up and took his two wives, his two male, female servants, and his 11 sons and crossed the ford of the Jabbok. Now, let me pause there for a second and give you a little bit of context here. You know, today, many times the Bible comes under scrutiny and God comes under scrutiny because of things like this where Jacob had two wives and, and all that whole thing going on. And we're like, well, there's polygamy in the Bible. And, you know, and people kind of attack the Lord that way. I want you to always remember something when you're reading scripture. There is a difference between description and prescription. Always remember that. What we see here is a description of what was going on in uh, Jacob's life in the context of his life and that culture. All right, but this is not a prescription for how people are supposed to act. Understand that. Many times God describes, he's not prescribing, he's describing what was going on. Whenever Jesus talked about marriage, he went all the way back to Genesis when marriage was between a man and a woman. Whenever God speaks about marriage, he talks about it in a singular view, all right? This is a description of what they were doing, and God still used them, but God's not endorsing that. Make sense? Get it? Good, there's your clear view of God today. <laughs> Drop the mic. Okay, let's go. Let's move on here. I don't want you to get all worked up about that because that's important. Verse 23, after he had sent them across the stream, he sent over all of his possessions. So Jacob was left alone and a man wrestled with him till daybreak. When the man saw that he could not overpower him, he touched the socket of Jacob's hip so that his hip was wrenched as he wrestled with the man. Then the man said, let me go for it is daybreak. But Jacob replied, listen to this. I will not let you go unless you bless me. The man asked him, what is your name? Jacob, he answered. Then the man said, your name will no longer be Jacob, but Israel, because you have struggled with God and with humans and notice and have overcome Jacob said, please tell me your name. But he replied, why do you ask my name? And then he blessed him there. So Jacob called the place Peniel, saying, it is because I saw God face to face, and yet my life was spared. The sun rose above him as he passed Peniel, and he was limping. Listen to that. No, notice that. He was limping because of his hip. Therefore, to this day, the Israelites do not eat the tendon attached to the socket of the hip because the socket of Jacob's hip was touched near the tendon. Now, there's a bunch of things in that passage that, that we could talk about in a class setting sometime, but I want to help us see some huge things and get a clear view of God and his work. You see, God often uses, and you see it in Jacob's life, often uses our spirit of determination to open our eyes to his miraculous work. He often uses our spirit of determination to open our eyes to his miraculous work. Jacob had a spirit of determination. I am not gonna let you go, God. I'm gonna wrestle in the presence of God. I'm gonna fight for the power of God so that I can enjoy the purpose of God in my life. You ever been there? And Jacob was not gonna let go and God often, 
I use the word activate at the beginning, and I'll say he uses our spirit of determination to open our eyes to his miraculous work. He was determined to receive God's blessing. His spirit, notice this, his spirit would not be broken. And Jacob knew, and so do we today, Jacob knew the only way forward was God keeping his promise and going before him. It was the only way forward for Jacob. He didn't know what the future would hold. But God had to be the one that did something. So what did he do? He stayed in the presence of God until he received the power of God to go forward in the purpose of God. And we need to remember this, just from that short overview and understanding of that story. We need to remember that the devil will try everything that he can. Don't miss it. He will try everything that he can to squelch your spirit of determination to receive the blessing of God. He will distract you. He will make you believe your doubts. He will put somebody critical in your life. He'll do something to squelch your spirit of determination. And for you and for me personally, us as a community, he will keep at the forefront of your mind things like pain, the pain that you are facing or the pain that you have had and not believe that God will keep his promises. Maybe mistakes. You see, I believe that mistakes um, keep us because we live according to our mistakes, keep us from receiving the blessing of God. I read this week that success happens when we stand on top of our mistakes, but the problem is, is that most, most people live under the weight of them. And the devil is going to make sure that he tempts you to live under the weight of your mistakes rather than standing on top of the mistakes that you have made and asking God to use them as a place of learning and of launching into the life that he's called you to. He will use things like disappointment, Disappointment with your life now, your context. You thought you would be somewhere else by now, but you are not, and you're disappointed. He will use people to break your spirit of determination. He will use negative influencers. He will use doubters. And he will even use you, yourself, to kill the spirit of determination. Please do not underestimate the power and the influence of our enemy. It is real. And the spirit of determination to wrestle and fight and hold on to God and his presence, his power, and his purpose. That's where he begins his miraculous work. And so what must we do? What must we do? Well, the Bible says in Psalm 34, verse 8, to taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the one who takes refuge in him. In Matthew 17, there was a father who had a demon-possessed boy. And the father went to uh, all of the disciples to say, hey, can you help me? And the disciples couldn't do it. The disciples could not cast the demon out. They went to Jesus, and the, and the father said, you know, hey, they, they can't do it. Like, listen, your associate's here. Like, we, we need the lead guy, Right? And Jesus kind of got on him a little bit and he said, oh, you have little faith. And he turned back to them and he said this. He said, he replied, because you have so little faith, because they asked why it couldn't happen through them. It's because your faith was so small. And he said this, truly I tell you, if you have the faith as small as a mustard seed, you can say to this mountain, move from here to there and it will move. Nothing will be impossible for you. Let me tell you something that Jesus is teaching there. He is not measuring the amount of faith that you have. He is measuring your willingness to put it in him, whatever the size of faith that you have is. You see, I think oftentimes we think that God only moves through people who have faith that's unexplainable. God will use the, the little bit of faith that you have if you, if you fully entrust it to the Lord. What must we do? What we must do is we must be people who taste and see that the Lord is good and we must take whatever faith that we have and put it in the category of God's promise and his faithfulness. And then we have to hold on. Paul said in Galatians chapter six, verse nine, do not grow weary in doing good for at the proper time we will reap a harvest if we do not 
give up. In other words, we've got to be a bunch of Jacobs. We've got to hold on. And when you feel like letting go, your spirit of determination says, I will not let go until you bless me, Lord. We have to hold on. And so if the Lord is good, and he is, and we, through a spirit of determination, do not give up until he blesses us, and we'll put whatever amount of faith that we have in the goodness of God, he promises to bless us. Now, that looks, how that looks is God's timing. Excuse me, what it happens is, God time, is God's timing. How it looks is God's decision. But we must determine to wrestle for as long as it takes. And when we are through the season that we face, we might limp a little. We just might limp a little. See, I've come to believe this. I believe that prideful people walk with a strut, but surrendered people walk with a limp. I believe that. And I'm not talking about being self-deprecating at all. What I'm talking about is someone who has spent time in the presence of God. And in the presence of God is waiting for the power of God so that they might see the purpose of God. And sometimes, in fact, oftentimes, He leaves a limp so you can be reminded that his power, his purpose that's found in his presence is what has caused you to be doing and living the life that you are now. Surrendered people walk with a limp. Prideful people walk with a strut. Don't forget that. I've told you that I uh, had a severe stuttering problem when I was in high school and younger than that. God healed me of that stuttering problem, but you know how good God was? He still allows me to stutter every once in a while. You've heard me do it. And I'll say things like, don't worry, I'll get it out. And I'll kind of make fun of myself. But you know what it is? It's a reminder that I walk with a limp. It's good. Don't be upset if God says, I want you to limp. It's all right. And let it be a reminder that you met with God. Get it? Good. So what is the movement moment that you are praying for? What is it? Name it to the Lord. And you resolve this day, you resolve to have a spirit of determination Tell your life group about it, or at least someone that is serving Jesus alongside you. Don't just call a childhood friend. Don't just call, don't just tell somebody in the cubicle at work. No, I'm talking about someone who's going to journey with you. I'm talking about someone that, that uh, knows that they have the freedom to put their boot just where it needs to be put when you are acting the way you shouldn't act. I'm talking about people that will pray for you. I'm talking about people that will love you. Tell someone, pray for it, and pray for one another. As I said, only had a few minutes, and so I hope that encourages you today. It encourages me. I encourages me. I wrote this message, um, and boy, I could keep going, and I could walk around, and I could preach it, baby. But, um, but I want you to be encouraged. Okay, you see, we have, we have the same spirit of determination in our church. Probably more than we've ever had. You are standing in front of a pastor who has a spirit of determination that he's probably never had. It's different. It's different. And um, I believe you have it. I've never seen you the way that you are now. I've not seen this kind of deep, godly tenacity wanting more from God than I see now. Uh, We have great vision. Uh, God is faithful, and we've seen it. We've seen it. We relaunched this church three years ago, building it really from the ground up again. Uh, We threw out the playbook, this is review, I know, and sought God for his provision. We wrestled, we debated. 
I certainly doubted. Uh, I remember a day after COVID, we had 15 people here. I remember. <laughs> and yet God came out with his blessing upon us. And we have obstacles, but our God is able and we will not let go. And we will come out and we will walk with limps and we're gonna rejoice in those limps because God is the one that we are surrendered to. Okay, get it? Good. All right, I had 20 minutes and I went 20 minutes and 35 seconds. That's pretty good for Jason. All right, it's pretty good, it's pretty good. All right, so you know that. So I wanna invite out uh, uh, Lawrence, Pastor Lawrence and Sarah to come on out. Give them a Western Reserve welcome. Here they come. You can move your chairs wherever you wanna do it. Uh, and I'm gonna step aside, but before I do that, um, let me just kind of frame a little bit as, as they've joined us here, uh, frame what they're gonna be doing. They're gonna be talking about... Um, they're going to be talking about our children's ministry, and they're going to be talking about um, our adult ministries and our give it away ministries. Uh, let me tell you something. The people that sit behind me um, are why much of what has happened is happening. Um, I owe much to these two, uh, and there's other people as well, but I'm very, very grateful for these guys, and you're going to hear that here today. Um, so let me just kind of frame for you again. I use that word a lot where we are and why, why we're going where we are a children's ministry before they talk about it. As we had transition in staff and um, there, uh, we began to talk to people about taking uh, this role. And as I was, I was the one talking to people. And as I learned more and more about uh, kind of where we are and where, what's happening and we're seeing our church move, um, I was very clearly, uh, or very able, I should say, clearly able uh, to say where I wanted our children's ministry to be in five to 10 years. I never have a problem doing that. You guys know me, right? I can tell you right where we wanna be. My problem was I didn't really know where we were. <laughs> and so as I spoke to people, I said, you, they would ask questions I'm like, well, you know, I don't really know. I better figure that out. And so what we decided to do is we decided to, the illustration I'm using is get our head underneath the hood and try to understand where we were, where we're going, what needs to happen according to our culture is what I mean by that. Our culture, what needs to happen, how it needs to look. Uh, well, just through that realization, God has put together an incredible plan that I can't believe. And this is absolutely the way we need to go. And so I couldn't be, honestly, I couldn't be more excited about it. And so uh, as we've been meeting, I bet we've probably met 20, 25 hours together mm -hmm. uh, in my office and They've seen more of me than they want to for the past few weeks. I've driven pretty hard. Uh, but it's, this is what's come out of it, and uh, we're excited. So I'm going to turn this over to them, and you guys can go crazy. Yeah, so I'll, I'll start us off, I guess. Yeah. Um, you know, and as I was listening backstage, I what really resonated me most with me most about um, this structure of children's ministry that we're doing is the fact that Pastor Jason talked about having that just mustard seed of faith, um, just that little bit amount of faith. And so the people that we're, we're going to introduce you to here on the screen, um, they have that faith. They have that little bit of faith. And what I love about um, these people that are going to be helping to lead our children's ministry is I think it only took like maybe one or two conversations with these people. And they're like, I'm all in. I'm all in. And I cannot wait to see what God does through our children's ministry. Um, and it's been really cool for Lawrence and I and Pastor Jason, of course, um, to work on this thing together. Because as we have kids that are growing up in this, in this ministry as well, um, we get to be a part of that too. Yep. Um, so we want to introduce you to a few people that are that are helping to lead our children's ministry. Um, they're going to see their pictures here up on the screen. And if you're in this room, I don't know if all of you are, but if you could just wave your hand so we can say hi to you. Um, first, we have Brent and Krista Runkle. Um, Brent and Krista Runkle, um, are you guys in here? They might be serving back in the check-in. They are back there. Awesome. If you can hear us, hello, uh, your picture's on the screen. Um, Brent and Krista Runkle, they are going to be leading our admin team. And so what this means is they're going to be doing all of the scheduling for the children's volunteers. They're going to be working behind the scenes um, with systems and trainings and working with Pastor Lawrence on, on those things as well, because Lawrence, you're more of a systems 
little person bit. than I am. Bit, yeah. I just tend to go and keep going. <laughs> so uh, he reins me in a little bit. But um, they're going to be working on that. They're also going to be overseeing our check-in and check-out procedures. Um, so we're going to be cleaning some things up there and making that um, even more secure for parents and children um, in the future days. So Brent and Krista Runkle, if you see them, give them lots of hugs. Um, <laughs> next we have... <laughs> Ask them first. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. Might want to. Like I said, I just go. I'm like, hey, get over here. Um, the next person we have here up on the screen is Emily Cinco, and that's my sister, so I like her a lot. Ooh. Yeah, I like her a lot. Um, she um, She's married to Greg, that's my brother-in-law, um, and their kids are Max and Jake, uh, so those are my nephews. But um, anyway, we didn't ask her to do this position because she's related to me. We asked her to do this position because she is awesome at organization and administration, and she really does come alive when it comes to teaching kids about Jesus. I've seen it, um, witnessed it, and she just... She has a whole mind for this. So Emily is coordinating our curriculum. Um, she's going to be working week to week to read through all the lessons for all the different age groups and picking all of the activities that go along with that um, and making sure that those work well in the classroom. So another part of that she's going to be doing weekly, um, she's setting up the classrooms every week, printing off curriculum, buying the supplies, um, organizing that all for the teachers. But she's also acting as our classroom host. And so what that means is she's going to go room to room every single week um, that she's scheduled. Of course, we're going to give her breaks. <laughs> That's kind of where you guys come in. She'll need some help with that. Um, but going classroom to classroom, checking in with the teachers. Hey, do you need anything? Do you have any questions about the lesson? Do you need a glue stick? Um, things like that. So she's going to be really the, the a hug. A hug. <laughs> she's not a hugger. She's not. If you want a hug, you can come hug me and then you can give her a, a high five or whatever. Um, so, so that's Emily's role. Um, next, we have Heidi Jackson. I mentioned her earlier. I know she's over there. Hi, Heidi. Um, Heidi is our events coordinator for, for Reserve Kids. And so she's, she's taking on Night in Bethlehem. And actually, she came to us um, before we had asked her to step into this role. And she said, hey, like, I'd really like to coordinate this event. I love this event. It's great for families and kids. And I'm really passionate about it. So would you let me coordinate this event? And of course, we said, yes, absolutely. And so that just led to some more conversations about, you know, what her passion is and how she can serve in children's ministry. And again, it's just that, that little bit of faith, that little bit of faith that not only Heidi had, but these other people as well to step in, fill these gaps that we need. And man, they are coming to life. Yeah. It's really, really cool. So um, those are our children's leaders. And of course, um, Pastor Lawrence and I and Pastor Jason, we're staff support. So we are meeting with these people. We're helping to support them um, in whatever way that we can. So, but in addition to that, um, there are many of you who already serve in the children's ministry, and we thank you, um, but we still need a few more helpers, and especially with these new leaders. Um, we're a team. We're a family here at church, and so part of that is supporting one another in our ministries. Um, so Lawrence is going to talk a little bit about what we need specifically. Yeah. Uh, you know, guys, there are a lot of different opportunities that we have in Reserve Kids for you guys to serve. We're actually going to throw a few of these opportunities up on the screen that you'll be able to see. Uh, we talk about, in our church, uh, discipleship a lot, right? We talk about uh, the Great Commission, this, this command that we have in Scripture to make disciples um, of, of all people and, and teaching them to obey Christ and so forth. So um, we believe that all of that starts with our kids, right? As we, as we train them up, as we share the gospel with them, what we do in these classrooms uh, week in, week out on, on Sunday mornings and, and also with our events and so forth, uh, it's all built towards that end, right, of sharing the gospel with these kids, making disciples. And so there are a lot of opportunities that you can get involved and be a part of this with us. Uh, you see those on the screen again. Uh, a couple different um, terms on there to define your terms, right? A couple different things you'll see on there. Uh, to, you'll see a teacher, helper, and then the word host, uh, just to define what some of those things are, teachers are, uh, they would, that would be a position where you are actively teaching the kids in the ministry. So uh, we, we reserve this for um, our, our stakeholders here in the church to be in this position. 
uh, teaching our kids, going through the curriculum. Um, and that's accompanied with, in each of our classrooms, a helper. Uh, this is someone, doesn't have to be a stakeholder, anybody can come and be a part of this. Uh, but you can come in and you come alongside essentially as a teacher's aide, uh, being in the classroom, helping with kids, uh, just spending time with them and, and so forth. So uh, that's the teacher helper distinction. And then we have this term host. Uh, this is something new that we're, we're launching into now uh, with the addition of our teams with Brent and Krista and then also with, with Emily Cinco. Uh, the, the host position is essentially our Sunday morning, um, our, our first impression with people, right? You get to, um, in this host spot, you get to, in the check-in area, interact with parents, interact with guests, make sure people are checking in well and are able to uh, get in our system, get in the right classrooms and so forth. Uh, and then we also have a classroom host. This is what Emily is doing, uh, walking the halls, interacting with volunteers, asking uh, what you may need in each classroom and, and how you can be of any uh, assistance. And so there's a lot of different roles, a lot of different opportunities. Um, we ask you to look at this list um, of different positions, different helper positions, teacher positions, host positions. If there's something you're looking at on that list and you say, I want to be a part of that. Right? I want to be a part of that classroom. I want to teach these kids. I want to be a part of this movement that God is doing here in our church. Uh, come and talk to us, right? And we, we would love to get you plugged in uh, into the right. right and, and Lawrence, what is our, our goal? What, we're ask, what are we asking the Lord to provide as far as number of volunteers? Yeah, there? Uh, we're asking uh, for total in our ministry. We're asking God to provide uh, 30 total volunteers uh, in, in the classroom. Right now, uh, we're about 23. Three, I think, yeah. Okay. Uh, 23, and we're, we're asking God to bring in uh, those extra numbers in those spots that you saw on, on the screen. Yeah. And, and what does that do, then? If we have that many, what does that do as far as uh, covering all of our bases? Yeah, uh, that, that does cover all of the, the needs, all the different spots uh, in the ministry that, that we need covered. Uh, and it also provides us a little bit of a cushion yeah. uh, okay. for people that uh, maybe you, you, you get sick and you're not able to come, uh, or you, you're going on vacation. It gives us a little bit of a buffer uh, extra volunteers in the classrooms to be able to cover some of those those empty spots. Yeah. So. Absolutely. I wanted to add, too, uh, we made that slide on Thursday, I think, mm -hmm. and since then we've actually added two or three more volunteers. Yeah. So praise yeah. the Lord. You guys are already stepping up before we even got up mm -hmm. here. So I think that's really cool how the Lord aligns that. But I wanted to mention, too, if, if you're sitting there wondering, like, yeah, that sounds really good. I wonder, I wonder how I can be involved in that. Again, you can talk to us. You can talk to Brent and Krista. They're going to be the ones that are getting you on the schedule and getting you onboarded. So probably be better if you you talk directly to them that way we don't have to be the middleman but of course we can help you um, one thing I did want to add too is um, something that we're asking our current volunteer team to just consider and pray about is this possibility of serving um, more than once a month um, a lot of our teams here in the church actually uh, serve at least twice a month and the reason why we're asking that in children's ministry and we know that that's a big ask um, because in other areas of the church you can actually serve and attend church and and you can't do that when you're in a classroom, right? Like if you're actively teaching kids twice a month, you're, you're not in here twice a month. And so we know that's a huge ask. Um, but the reason why we're asking our volunteers to consider and pray about that is uh, we really want to build consistency for our kids. Right. Um, there's many of you who maybe grew up in church and you can think back to, you know, that Sunday school teacher that was always there mm -hmm. um, and they helped you out. And so we really want to build that for our children as we're discipling them in Christ. Um, so if you're if you're coming along with us on this uh, team, we would ask that you would consider praying about that and just seeing you know how the Lord can use you in a child's life just by showing up consistently. So, um, but next I wanted I think we can move to the next yeah, thing, right? Okay, absolutely. good. Want to make sure we didn't miss anything, but. <laughs> yeah. What was neat is Lawrence and I actually had the opportunity to sit down with, um, I would say, pretty much everyone in our children's uh, ministry. We were missing a couple people just due to scheduling conflicts. Um, but we got to sit down with them over the course of three meetings over two nights. Um, and many of you in this room were, were there with us. And you gave us a lot of really great feedback. And we were super encouraged mm -hmm. by those meetings, just hearing about why you enjoy serving in children's ministry. And what was interesting to us, um, and I want to note this here because I think maybe it will help anybody that might be on the fence about serving in children's ministry, is actually one of the number one reasons these volunteers love serving in this ministry is to help you parents. 
Mm. Um, they said, we love giving parents the opportunity to attend church and be distraction free from their kids. That's what, that's what your children's volunteers mm. said. And we just thought that was really cool. And, um, actually somebody in the ministry, I won't name names, but, um, <laughs> she came up with this, with this idea of come join our village, right? Uh, a lot of you young parents out there, I mean, this is, this is a buzz phrase. So we'll just call it what it is. Join our village, right? It takes a village to raise, raise these kids, but you know, I'm a product of that mm. in this church. Mm. My kids have been been in this church since birth, and and I don't think that they would be, you know, in their walk with Jesus as closely as as they are if it weren't for you guys. Mm. Um, so anyway, uh, we actually have a, a short little video we want to show you. Um, again, our volunteers are so great. This was their idea, um, and a bunch of people in the ministry collaborated together to make this happen for this Sunday. And so um, we just want to show you that, um, just to hear directly from um, our volunteers in the ministry um, how much they love serving you as parents and how much they love discipling your kids. So you guys can show that video for us. Reserve Kids is a place where families come together with a common goal in mind. To raise wholehearted followers of Jesus Christ. A place where children are seen, loved, listened to, and snuggled. A place where kids learn the truth of God's word. A place of reliability and a safe place to have fun. You've heard the saying, it takes a village, and we embrace that and reserve kids. With many hands that join together, we guide every kid in our ministry along in their spiritual walk with Jesus. And we need you to help us in this mission. The laughter, the questions, the conversations, and the light bulb moments make it all worth it. Don't miss it. Come join our village and help us raise our kids in Christ together. Right, very good. Yeah, so um, guys, I'm just I'm super excited. I'm so proud of of our volunteers and, and this family. I'll talk more about that in just a moment. Uh, but we wanted to make sure that we communicated to you what was going on and how it's happening and and the work that's being done behind the scenes to serve you and to create a culture a culture where um, our families can continue to say their next yes to Jesus. Uh, but it doesn't just uh, uh, Stop there. We, you know, I've said this over and over and over again. Uh, we were talking in the green room this morning uh, about how I'm continually talking about this reality that that we've been developing strategically, um, step by step by step movement for the past three years, uh, and that movement has been uh, laying the right foundation and uh, making sure that we um, are doing things well behind the scenes so that when God uh, calls us to move into the next step of our church. And by the way, we are there. We are ready. I mean, so I, th this is, I'm so excited about it. But we're ready to finally launch into this third phase. Yeah. Um, and Pastor Lawrence uh, is a huge reason for that. Uh, we hired Lawrence uh, just a couple of years ago, a little over two years ago, to be our pastor of biblical integration. Yeah. And he was charged with developing and laying that foundation. And what he's going to do is he's going to kind of walk around that loop here for a couple minutes and kind of tell you about these phases and where we've going. And then he's going to add in the final piece of the loop um, in our Give It Away Ministries, and we're ready to launch. So, Lawrence, why don't you take over and talk to us? Yeah. Uh, well, you're, you're spot on that I came on two, two and a half years ago. Uh, and it's good to actually rewind the clock and look back at uh, that time, the vision for why I was brought on, uh, where we've where we've gone since then, and where we're going to continue to go. Um, I was brought on, like I said, two and a half years ago as the pastor of biblical integration. Uh, the The reason for that title, we um, we want to see our church biblically integrated uh, at all ages, all stages of life. So from from birth to to death, how are we um, integrating? Um, spiritual things. Are we integrating the Bible into their lives? Uh, it's all about about discipleship, right? We're we're used to that word, um, and so in in a in a pursuit of that, we uh, launched several things, looking at, um, at again that birth to to death. 
Um, total life uh, range. Uh, we and we'll started, let them decide which end they're so, on. Yeah, you, some of you closer <laughs> to others, right? Um, no, but starting with that with that birth, right in our in our kids ministry, uh, looking at how we're we're conducting ourselves there. What is the curriculum that we're using? Uh, and we ended up switching to something that we call the the Gospel Project, is a curriculum that that walks through all of the different stories in Scripture, uh, starting from Genesis all the way to Revelation. And the consistent theme throughout this curriculum is every week in the Gospel Project, we talk about the connection that this story has to the Gospel, right? We want to train up our kids to know uh, the good news of Jesus Christ, how, how everything before Christ in the Bible points forward to Him, and there's a connection to Him, how everything after Christ in that time period, everything after that in Scripture points back to Him and to what He did on the cross for us. And so this curriculum does that, right? It's the Gospel Project, seeing how, how that story is the central theme in, in Scripture uh, and wanting to train our kids up in that. Uh, in, in student ministry, we did the same thing, looking at our curriculum, what we're using, how can we, we change this and uh, be biblically integrated, teaching our, our students how, how they can be good uh, followers of Jesus Christ, how they can further grow in, in discipleship. And Emily has done an incredible job uh, carrying that out in, in her ministry, and so we're grateful for it. Uh, and then also we have our adult ministry. Right? How are we um, being biblically integrated? How are we pursuing discipleship in, in our adult ministries? And we've launched uh, several things. Uh, you guys have probably uh, either been through or seen our class that we call Core Training. Uh, this is something that we started about a year and a half ago, uh, going through uh, the gospel with our adults, right? The core teachings, the foundational teachings uh, that we believe are important for our church, uh, the gospel, the great commission, and what it means to be a disciple. And so uh, this class is a, a deep dive into all of that where we, um, we really see that in, in a class setting. We can talk about it and really, uh, really get our hands dirty learning um, learning the truth of the gospel. And we've seen how many people? 47, you thought? 40, I think it's 45. Have 45, been through it. yeah. Yep. People go through um, that. So again, I, I guess I can have this little moment as a plug, right? Yeah. Uh, yeah. To say we're going to be having core training again. And this is not something for you know the spiritually elite and, and people who, who know their Bible super well. This is for everybody, right? If you're wanting to know uh, what your church believes is the core of Scripture and the core things that we uh, we teach and want you to know. Come be a part of that. Um, it was through that process of bringing about core uh, that we launched into our philosophy as a church that we call "Get it, got it, give it away." Uh, that's that's the the theme of discipleship that we see in Scripture. Discipleship uh, is about get it, which is. Uh, continuing to learn more about God, more about his word, that we, we want people to, to get it, to understand, uh, and to continue to grow in learning uh, that way. We have got it. This is all about uh, lifestyle application. How do we take the things that we're getting and, and actually begin to implement it, to be a church that's got it? Um, and then finally, we have give it away. So you, you learn about it, you begin to apply it. Now give it away is all about giving it to people around you that don't necessarily know, right? Sharing the gospel with other people, sharing what, what you're learning and what you're growing in with others so they can grow as well. So uh, we launched into Get It, Got It, Give It Away as, as, our, as our theme, as our philosophy uh, for our church. Uh, and then we had uh, some other things along the way, like Unqualified. Um, there's a really awesome guy who wrote that. Um, if you're not sure what Unqualified is, it's a, uh, it's a devotional that we wrote all around these themes, again, of gospel, great commission, what it means to be a disciple of Jesus Christ. Uh, and we're using that now in our stakeholders classes. If you're coming on to our church, you want to be uh, in it with us, and uh, stakeholders is our membership class, right? So if you want to be with us as a stakeholder, a part of what we're doing, uh, the one thing that we want you to get and to know with us is this, this component of get it, got it, give it away, what it means to be a disciple, what the gospel is, and so forth. So uh, it's coming into all of these different areas of our life, from, from kids to students to adults. Uh, and as Jason was saying, we're starting to take the next step, going into the next phase um, for our adult ministries, what we believe God is doing uh, in our church. 
Uh, and that's going to come in the form of uh, additional classes uh, that we're going to start running outside of stakeholders, outside of core training. Uh, we're looking at, again, this philosophy of get it, got it, give it away. Uh, what are some classes that we can um, offer to our people so, again, they can further get it? further learn what is um, in, in God's word, what he has for them and for their lives. Uh, classes on, on got it, right? How do we take this and begin to apply it? I'm thinking uh, things like, like marriage and, and parenting and finances. And you know, the Bible tells me that I have to live my life a certain way. How do I do that? So, so we want to offer classes talking about the get it component, talking about the got it uh, component for um, for us. And then uh, we're getting into this, this third phase as well of, of give it away, our give it away ministries, um, seeing what God is doing here. How can we as a church begin to look out, right, to, to the people in our community uh, that, that need the Lord, that need um, him and needs his people to be reaching out to them? Uh, we, again, we talk about the Great Commission a lot in, um, in our ministries here as a church, uh, one, one of those commissioning moments comes in Acts chapter 1, verse 8. It says, But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you. And you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, in all Judea and Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. The idea there being, if you are going to be a disciple of, of Jesus Christ, if you're going to be a church that talks about discipleship as, as your, your cry, right, what you want your church to be about, that's not complete unless you're going out, right? That's not complete unless you're being his witness to your community and to the surrounding community. And so uh, as a staff, we're, we're beginning to ask questions uh, like, how, you know, what are the needs in our community that we can step into and meet collectively? How can we step in and, and be the church to, to our community? We're thinking uh, things like uh, addiction recovery ministries. How can we uh, get plugged into our community and, and provide uh, for some of those needs there? Uh, we're thinking uh, divorce care uh, ministries in our church. How can we uh, be stepping into that need, uh, looking at finances and, and uh, our, our world that uh, seems to be falling apart in a lot of ways financially, <laughs> right? How can we be stepping in? How can we be filling the void uh, as a church and be the church for for people? And so we're in the process now of, uh, I'm in the process now of meeting with people that uh, say this is their passion, right? And, and of course, it's our passion. So how can we then work together as the church to be the church and reach out to those in our community around us? So uh, if this is something that, that excites you, right, that interests you, that you say, hey, those, those give it away ministries, like I, that's something that I want to be a part of. I want to learn uh, more about and, and maybe get plugged in. Uh, talk to me because uh, that's something that, that we're going to be uh, starting into at the first of the year, and we're looking for people that have this desire uh, with our church and want to get plugged in. Yeah. Now, I know there's not much going on around here, um, <laughs> but, uh, or in your life. It's not like you just became a father no, or anything. No, no, no not at all. Uh, but uh, we're going into the holidays. Things are going to get busy. Mm -hmm. We have a lot on our plate. But if, if we could say our, our goal is to, to launch into these things, what are we looking at, these as far as dates and yeah, times. Yeah. Now, we're looking to, to start all of these things on February 1st. Uh, that'll give us a little bit of time to uh, further talk to you guys, right? Bring the teams together, work through how we're going to launch it, and then, and then get going. Um, not exactly first of the year, but, but pretty close as the new term starts. Yeah, very good, very good. Get it? Good, all right. Let's give it up for these guys. Appreciate them very much. <laughs> Now, uh, they're going to stay up here, or are you going to go back? What are you going to do? You do whatever you want, you want right? right? Okay. Uh, but um, I think you're going to stay up here. Is that what we decided? Yeah. Okay. So it's going to be really awkward for just for a few minutes. Not at all. All right. So um, what I get to do is, is uh, close the loop here with you just for a minute, uh, if I can. Um, here's what I want us to, uh, to see. I don't want you to walk away uh, missing this. You need to see and understand that we're a community, okay? That's what we are now. It's a little bit larger community. When we think of community, we think of a few friends, or we obviously think of a neighborhood, okay? But when we talk about community in church, a lot of times we think of life groups. We think, right, those are smaller, intimate communities, but we function together as a community. 
um, the word village has been used as well, okay? You need to remember that the church belongs to one another. We belong to one another. You belong to me. I belong to you, all right? Please remember that. Um, this church is amazing. I asked, because uh, I didn't know, actually know the numbers. I asked yesterday the number of people serving in different ministries, and there's about 110 to 120 different people, different volunteers volunteering in our ministry every week to be a part of everything that happens in our church, both here, behind the scenes. Um, you need to know this is your church. It's our church together. It's not Jason's church. Please don't call it that. Um, it's us. We are, we are a where you go, I go people, okay? That's what we are, and that's what I want to continue to build, okay? Now, I'll tell you something, though. If I can be honest with you, um, uh, whenever we are moving, we were praying about this in the green room this morning, um, that whenever we are stepping out, we're stepping out with an after-school program, we're stepping out with uh, the daycare that we're praying to God. This is all missional. It's all, all these things that we're doing and uh, raising revenue. Whenever we're stepping out and doing these, these bigger things, we need to remember that giants loom. And they want to bring us down. I reread this week the story of David and Goliath. Let me tell you something that I saw that I've probably seen before, but I was reminded of it as if it was the first time. But I saw that David went behind, he brought food or whatever, you know, things that he messages, things like that. He was small, he was all those things, right? Underdog. And he came in behind the lines and, and uh, the giants were mocking them. Every day they'd come out like at five o'clock and tell them how much of a loser they were, nation, all this, right? David came out and he started asking questions about the giants. His brother rebuked him. Go back and read it. He rebuked him. And he said, who are you? Da, 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 you know, da, da. David then turns to start talking to somebody else. And then he, then he went on and he said, you know what? He said, who are these Philistines that they should defy the armies of the living God? He was discouraged. He was mocked. He was attacked by family. And what did he do? He stepped out and he faced the giant. And he says, you know what? You all do what you want to do, but my God is able. And I think that we as a church are ready to step out. I'm ready to step out. And I hope that you'll step out with me. So let me close the loop and tell you uh, some things here, just review some things. Um, uh, Doug Justice was up here last week and shared our obstacle, which is finances, and we'll probably be, every church has its thing, that's our thing, right? And, uh, but it's just what we have to continue to ask God to provide. We need obstacles, so we trust the Lord. It's our limp, okay? But we laid out a plan with you. We're working really hard. It's up here um, on the screen. Our plan, so you know, to address our obstacle is we're cutting uh, 2024 expenses by about 60K plus. Believe it or not, that's actually sustainable. Um, and we, we we're gonna meet this week. We just, we're also busy because of Thanksgiving. We'll talk budget in, in a week from this week with the elders and we've already been doing it, but that's, we'll get a final number, okay? Uh, we're taking a year end offering. Uh, that's huge. Remember Doug said that we're, we need about 70, $80,000 to hit budget. So we just need to do that together. All right, um, we're gonna be campaigning for increased giving. Um, I'll talk with you about that in just a moment. Uh, we're developing after school and daycare. After school, uh, we're closer than certainly the daycare. But one of the things that I talked to Brent this week, one of the things we're facing is what are we gonna do about transportation? So we need you to pray about that. We don't know how that's gonna work yet. Okay, and that's an obstacle, and the Lord just needs to handle that and take care of it, and he will. So if you want to donate a bunch of vans, let me know, okay? Okay, go ahead. All right, um, and then we're going to do a 2024 financial campaign. Uh, we were slated to meet with some advisors this past week, some consultants. Um, I'm sick. Um, I've been sick, so I couldn't do that, so we're, we are rescheduling that, and we'll let you know uh, when we uh, can do that, Okay. So that's our plan, we're going about it. Go to the next slide, I don't remember what's next. Oh yeah, okay. Um, 
How about those thermometers? There you go, give it up. We're doing well. We're at 1% and 0%. That's encouraging. Okay, no, we just started it. Just wanted to, we're going to try to show these with you. Doug said it's between 70 and 80,000 for a year end offering. Um, we, uh, I'm just putting it at 80,000. Um, and we've seen $1,200 come in already, so we're 1%. Praise the Lord. We're at 1%. We'll take that, right? We want to see this happen over the next month. Uh, or so before the first of the year. And then increased giving, we're praying that we would see uh, $50,000 in increased giving. I, we just, we just launched that. Um, and uh, just so you know, when we look at that, um, it seems like a pretty overwhelming goal. It really isn't. Uh, uh, as a community, we have about 112 giving units. You can do the math what that is per unit. It isn't a big deal. It really isn't. It's just whether or not we're gonna own it together. Okay, and so I'm going to boldly and unapologetically ask you uh, to be a part of this uh, and to increase your giving. Some of you can increase it a lot. Some of you cannot, but we need to be a part and we need to raise that giving, okay? It's all part of the plan that we're going to keep talking about. You're going to be like, he's talking about it again. Yep, I am, okay? All right, next slide. There it is. Okay, so this is just a... A snapshot, if you go online, um, you can see donations. Go to wrgc.life, go to giving. And these are the things that pop up. This might be too much information for you, but we want to equip you. And there's places that you can click down, okay? 2023 year in gifts, you can go there online, make a donation. You go to general, general fund, all those different categories. It's how you do it. And we're asking everybody to, to do that and um, to be a part of that, okay? And we'll, we'll keep tracking. Right? Does that make sense? Get it? Got it? Okay, I was trying to equip you. Is there another one that I have up here? Nope? Okay, good. <laughs> so I'm done. Let's, let's get, no, uh, I really am done. We are done. Uh, can I just ask you to appreciate uh, two of our team members? We have more, but these two. Appreciate them so much. Um, uh, Lawrence and Sarah, why don't you, let's pray. The team can start coming up, but why don't we pray for our children's um, team leaders and uh, the ministry, and then just that God would provide. Can you guys go ahead and pray? And, and then we'll, we'll change out. So let's pray together. Go ahead. Lord, we just, um, first of all, we're so grateful. Lord, we're grateful for this church that you've built for us. We're grateful for these people that um, you've come and put us all together, God, with different gifts and skills and abilities, Lord. It's, it's really amazing, and so we're thankful. God, we just lift up our children's volunteers to you, the Runkles and Emily and Heidi, and also um, Emily and Heidi's families, too, as, um, as they're giving up their time and, and resources to be a part of what we're doing in, in Reserve Kids. God, we pray that you would protect their marriages, um, that you would protect relationships with their kids, and God, that you would just give them, um, God, just these little breadcrumbs of faith and breadcrumbs of just um, outpouring of, of what you're doing through them, Lord, so that way they can just keep going. I pray that our church can uh, just rally around these people and support them well, um, to join their teams, Lord, to see the bigger picture of of why we do this, Lord, and it's all for your glory, your name, and, and for kids to come to know you as their Savior, Lord. God, I just want to thank you for this church. I want to thank you for this, this vision that you've given us, this vision that you provided for us in your word, that we get to come together around this, this commission to share your truth to make disciples starting with our, our kids ministry and, and on up thinking specifically about our kids God I pray that you'll bless this movement that's starting in that ministry with these new leaders thinking of the Runkles, thinking of Emily Cinco thinking of Heidi Jackson the passion that they have to serve you, the passion that they have to, to use their gifts for you in this ministry. God, I pray that you'll bless them and that you'll show us through, through these kids coming to know you, through them taking new steps of faith. We'll be able to, to look back and say, God, you did that. Hmm. And we thank you for it. So we ask for your presence, God. We ask for this all for your glory. In your name, amen.
Thanks, guys. <laughs>